Hello and good evening. Um, welcome back to the Jobnet Training Developer Series. Uh, we've been on a journey so far. We've covered uh, front end, back end, and now we are into Moodle uh, API itself. Um, and we've done Moodle introduction and um, uh, installation of Moodle. Now we are actually starting the APIs, which is which can be referred to as uh, the architecture or the framework that uh, that is used to build module learning management systems, uh, part of uh, most educational BLE. As a matter of fact, it is the uh, the foremost BLE in the world right now, uh, the foremost LMS in the world, I should say. Uh, as you know, LMS stands for Learning Management System, which is part of a virtual learning environment, BLE. Right, so we've already covered module introduction, developer basics, and installation uh, modules. There are also module administration courses, which are necessary for developers to know about because it is good to know when you're developing application for teachers and uh, students to know what their perspectives are while they are uh, using your software. Okay. Now, uh, our focus is really going to be on uh, the three main things, software architecture, the underpinning core API, and other APIs needed to develop the plugins we are going to develop. Uh, remember I mentioned that the Google, uh, our journey will culminate in all developing commercial grade software, learning software, uh, data analytics software, and uh, software that can be used for AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, so these plugins uh, I mentioned uh, will be designed from reviewing the plugin directory and choosing the most appropriate ones uh, that function to the design we want while adding our own uh, bespoke designs to it. Uh, so such that uh, they solve pressing enough problems that current educators uh, and maybe even yourself may have. Uh, then again, you could also be an educator as well. So the prerequisites for this uh, tutorial or this course uh, already should already be covered because of the previous lesson, which was uh, installation of Moodle. You must have a database. You must have PHP. Uh, uh, and uh, essentially, that these are the requirements the environment must have. Um, now, what are we going to do in this uh, trial, this uh, module part of the of this uh, developer video series? We're going to, for the APIs, we're going to define the APIs, uh, the functionality they each offer, and what and what benefits they have the in-depth concept syntax of the API with demonstrable examples for each. Uh, a, a small assignment will be given for each of them so that you can begin to grasp the API uh, in more depth and, and uh, apply your knowledge uh, towards building the project so we don't stray into uh, areas that are too further afield than our goal. Okay. Um, so our custom plugin will include an improved version of uh, the Moodle based theme. Uh, this theme functionality is to measure the competency of students by causing a report on the user's front page and or the dashboard. Um, so remember it's a learning data analytics, so it's going to be analyzing uh, the strengths and weaknesses of students and how they're going to get better and what they should do, suggesting to them how to get better. So the next uh, uh, API that we would definitely need is the competency API. Uh, and we also need the graph API uh, or, or chart API uh, for for this. Um, so that really can, so um, performance could be more aesthetic when being viewed by students. Now, it is important to know that this learning process is part uh, part of it is discovering the gaps in functionality so that we can richly apply our newly acquired Moodle development skills and build a wealth and build a wealth of problem solving portfolio. Um, so what is the Moodle API? It is it stands for application programming interface. 
and it is a library file of functions for the named Moodle API. We're going to name them now. Uh, so the core APIs are critical and be used by nearly every plugin in Moodle. Uh, so we've got the page API, uh, we've got the access API, the output API, page API, access API, output API, navigation API, Moodle Lib API, string API, data manipulation API, file API, form API, upgrade API. So yeah, quite a lot of them actually. So we're not gonna name I'm not gonna name all of them for you, you can read about them. But I'll make mention of one of them that is very critical to us, or two of them really. So analytics API and uh, competency API, which I've already mentioned before, uh, um, are very core components for what we're really trying to do. So we're going to go through this API with tutorials on each, between one to three examples, so that I begin to grasp what we're doing. But before we delve into the APIs, um, this is the, the right place to talk about the makeup or structure of the plugin. So Moodle code is split into different sections, and these are called components. So uh, we've got the core, uh, and, they're, and they're, this code is sitting in the lib folder, uh, uh, or the lib classes folder, where they are auto-loaded, auto-loaded core classes. I'll, I'll come to auto-loaded core classes a little bit, in a little bit. So we've also got subsystems, which are a group of related functions and classes that are part of the code, but are logically grouped together. Often they are tied to a particular feature uh, and can be disabled or enabled together. Um, plugins are optional components in Moodle that extend its functionality. So what we are actually going to be de uh, developing, designing and developing is a, uh, an add-on, a plugin add-on to Moodle that, would, that Moodle, uh, Moodle can function perfectly without, but once it's installed in it, it, it extends and uh, make the, uh, makes the functionality more fantastic, such that other users want want, uh, want it installed as well. So we've got about we've got over 370 plugins in Vanilla Moodle package, which uh, Vanilla Moodle is what we just installed uh, in the last uh, Moodle installation uh, lesson, which is right here. Okay, we've already uh, we need to log in again there. So um, so we've got that comes with three hundred or something blocking shifts. Um, so uh, and then you also have sub plugins uh, in terms of plugin types. Um, and uh, the uh, these sub plugins um, they assume uh, the functionality of the parent plugin, as, but um, as if Moodle does not exist. Uh, so they are native to just their, their parent plugin. Um, now, um, the other thing about about uh, sub plugins is that uh, the only plugin types of Moodle that allow sub plugins are activity models, um, which are here activity models, editors, administration tools, and and um, so you got these are the only types, okay? Okay, uh, so communication channels. There are different co ways to call code in Moodle, but most of them are listed here. I described in detail later on. So direct PHP function calls, external functions, JavaScript uh, modules AMD, uh, get string calls, templates, event observers, component callbacks. I will be implementing most of these uh, soon so that you just recall that we're using one of these communication channels when once we start implementing them. So the structure of a plugin. The code of a plugin is organized into multiple different files and directories within a single root directory. All plugins follow the same directory uh, and file structure. Um, so there are 24 different categories uh, in of Moodle plugins and growing. Um, so these are the types 
uh, they're growing in the sense that yes, you can contribute your own uh, custom plugin uh, and even uh, suggest different types of, of uh, different different categories of Moodle as we develop, uh, it expands. So the type typical files, uh, the version.php, lib.php, essentially everything listed here. Uh, as mentioned, all files we have these ones as typical uh, because they are core uh, APIs, uh, core Moodle files, uh, in, uh, and uh, they follow the core API. So they all have a single root directory, and each file has a particular function for Moodle implemented using the Moodle API. Our objective here is to understand Moodle, Moodle API while doing this assignment produce a new improved version of Debonair competency thing. Now, what you're looking at now is the Debonair competency thing. In other words, everything here, the look and feel, is all part of what's designed uh, for the Debonair competency thing. So, we're essentially going to start by, uh, once we start the design, it's going, this is all what is going to display it. So we're going to create a new version, which essentially is synergistic because once we start the plugin development proper, we're going to change some things around. We're going to need to make room for it. And in so doing, uh, we'll be customizing the theme anyway. But it is good for you to know that uh, at the end of this, one of the products we'll have is a new theme. So let's start with the setup of a theme based on the core API settings. So um, at this junction, I should say, this course is designed with maximum understanding. Mind maps to spark your imagination as we implemented this scaffold and build new concepts for you. Uh, so one of the, apart from I just told you about the theme just now, which is the, the look and feel, the aesthetic look, essentially it's like the cosmetics of, 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 the, of the learning site. That's what the theme is. Uh, that's consistent uh, from page to page as you go through. And because our plugin needs a page to sit in and it needs to be consistent and look unique and, and distinct enough, uh, that's, this is why this is important. And a theme is a product itself. So I've just introduced you to this concept of using themes. And this is one of the scaffolding I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, uh, that will boost your learning really uh, in all aspects of what we are doing in this in this journey. So automatic class loading is another one. It's another concept, and I'm going to. This is a core model concept. Auto, automatic class loading helps us automatically include class files as and when they are required, instead of manually including them every time. So therefore, Moodle supports automatic class loading. How does it work? Uh, it works by renaming, really. Well, one of them. Class naming. To be discovered by the Moodle, Moodle automatic class loader, classes must head to some class naming and location rules. So they must sit under classes directory of every component. Uh, in other words, lib library classes for if it's a core component, it will be in it will be in lib classes, lib slash classes uh, core component. Uh, for subsystem, there will be in subsystem directory classes subsystem. For plugin classes, there will be in plugin uh, plugin directory classes. So let me just show you what that looks like. Um, I've got. Um, I've got um, so we're directly in where we are now, analytic test, right? So um, so it says sit on the classes directory, okay? So for lib classes, um, for core components, okay? So these are this this uh the core component is uh module and mod are all core. From here is is no longer core. Okay, everything that shipped with Moodle is what's core. Analytic test you created as so it's no longer core. So therefore, um, if you go here. Going to 
model you see the lip, lip folder so it's got its own classes there and there you go so these are the uh, for, for con components so this is the core okay this is part of the core so this is where the classes are this is where automatic loading takes place for subsystem directory where the subsystems are involved there will be in the um, so subsystem directory is for example um going to let's go into mod so um assign so assign as a zoom assign is uh assign is a sub if you make it a sub uh sub uh, sub plugin it will be under assign uh, so uh, it has own classes so that will be here okay and then for plugin directory classes there will be uh this that will be exactly what i just showed you just now so this will be the classes here because this is a plugin plugin uh plugin on so assign is a plugin so um yeah so that's how that works okay so the list of valid plugin system with the creator can be found in this code well uh, essentially here so this is the list if you want it so here you go so this is the list of all uh, of all valid all valid plugin type okay so another thing one class file for each class uh, auto loading is always Frankenstein based, which we know about Frankenstein, right? Frankenstein is where the component name is the namespace. So it's going to be component name, or or like this, or like 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 uh, so core user example or mod forum example. So mod forum, the mod has to be there underscore then if it's forum or whatever. You put it afterwards this is actually to our new class is to Moodle uh, uh, or it could be Frankenstein prefix classes but this has been uh, deprecated so uh, do not use that one so it is an example here as I mentioned I'll really show you an example so namespace core event and you say class based PHP namespace mod forum event okay so this one has to be there which uh, describes uh add mod if it's a forum uh class then forum then the event okay so this is for lib classes event based on php so that's uh, about that one then you have callbacks um so there are a lot of ways to to add uh defined uh to uh, to add code to Moodle to call functions in Moodle and you use callbacks uh whether one to one or one to many uh and you can even add your own um uh, you can you can see all the callbacks here um listed so far okay so model once again is very well documented um I'm, I'm just wherever i feel like i need to add some more notes that's when you see it in the in and uh the online module modern lessons otherwise the, the, there's a direct link to the um uh, to moodle docs where the, the the documentation is very explicit so you have plugin types um and because moodle by design is powerful design is extensibility um, um the, the naming is very key so that we do not end up getting all confused trying uh, naming the same thing uh to do na naming naming something the same way to do different things causing confusion so the machine name must meet this uh prerequisite you must start with the lowercase letter later latin letter 
nos contiene only lowercase latin letter numbers and others close. It must end with a lowercase latin letter or a number. The hyphen and minus character are not, are not allowed. So this is not allowed at all. Okay, this is not allowed. You can use underscore instead. Okay, so this is an example of what is uh, a proper way of, of, of naming. This is a valid plugin name. And this is the regular expression used to determine if it is right or wrong. Uh, if not, if this, if it's not adhered to, they are ignored. Um, so, uh, plugin common files and the structure. So, these are the plugin common files which uh, you will find in plugins and the way it's structured. So, you've got a version PHP, which is version method that I got a language file. We'll go through all of these in detail, but this is an introduction. Uh, so you you know what to expect. You've got the lib, local lib, db install, db upgrade, uh, db access, db install, uninstall, events, messages, services, tasks, rename classes, classes, autoloaded classes, uh, CLI, uh, settings.php, AMD, UI backup and style the CSS. So that's it for the Moodle API introduction. Uh, now let's proceed to the next uh, lesson, which is page API. So that's it for this lesson. Uh, see you in the next one, which is page API.